This video is going to focus on proving triangles congruent. There are essentially four triangle postulates or theorems, and these are the four. The S stands for side and the A stands for angle. So we're talking side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, or spelled backwards. It does mean the same thing. This is the basic idea. Triangles, essentially, they have six parts. You have three sides, and you have three angles. Typically, if you were talking about ordinary polygons, you would have to show that the sides and the angles, all the sides and angles, of one polygon are congruent to all the sides and the angles of a second polygon. And then you would state that the polygons are congruent. For triangles, you only need three parts. As long as they're in a certain order, that would be enough to state that the triangles are congruent. So basically what you would do is you would just identify those three parts and then when you're done you state, hey, the triangles are congruent. Let's look at the first one, side, side, side. Basically with side, side, side that simply means that if you have three sides of one triangle and they're congruent to three sides of a second, then the triangles are congruent. Here's an example. If you look at this particular one here, you'll see that two sides of one triangle are equal to two sides of the other but they happen to share a third side and because of that we can identify that as the third side. We would say that the side is equal to itself because of the reflexive property. Thus the triangles are congruent because of SSS. The next one is side angle side. With side angle side basically it states that if you have two sides instead of three then the third part is an angle but that third part, that angle, has to be included, meaning that it is between the two sides. If you have that situation, then the triangles are congruent. In other words, if this is your angle, then the two sides that are surrounding it have to basically be the sides of the angle itself. If we don't have that scenario, then that's not enough to say SAS. Here's an example. You have two sides of one triangle congruent to two sides of the other. The third part, though, is an angle. Recall that vertical angles are congruent if they are attached at the same vertex and face in opposite directions. So we have the two sides. The angle is definitely between them. In other words, it's not over here, it's not over here. Since you have that in the second triangle as well, side, angle, side, then SAS proves that they are congruent. Here's a pair that are not congruent and yet might look like side angle side. In this particular example you'll see that we definitely have our two sides but the angle is not between those two. It is not included. Remember that the angle has to be included between the two sides. In this particular case this is your angle that's given this is the side here, the first one that helps make up one side of the angle, but we would need this one down here instead in order to state that they are congruent because of SAS. You'll notice that's the case over here on the right hand side as well. It would have to be these two sides since the angle here would have to be included between them. Here's another. You'll note that this one does have side angle side. However, the one on the right does not. It has the two sides, but the angle that we need it should be right there to give us SAS. Instead, the angle is outside. They both need to have side angle side in order for you to state that they are congruent. Here's one last one. You'll note that we have a pair of parallel lines. We also happen to have this side that they share. Remember we say the reflexive property allows us to, to identify that as a side. These two sides are parallel, but they're also marked congruent, so that's nice. Remember they are not the same thing. Typically though, when people see parallel sides, they immediately think that they're congruent. That's a mistake though. When you have parallel lines, that almost always means that you're going to have congruent angles. It does not mean congruent sides. So you should be looking for angles that are congruent as a result of these parallel lines. 
What comes up usually are uh, alternate interior angles, and you can see here with me drawing a Z, with two of the sides being part of the Z, you see the two angles trapped here and here? Well, those two particular angles are congruent. Those are, in fact, our alternate interior angles. So now look at what we've got. Side here, side here, angle. And the angle is between the two sides. Because we have that same arrangement in the other triangle as well, side, angle, side, then that's enough for us to prove that they are congruent. Okay, let's get into the other two. Starting off with angle, side, angle. This is when you have only one side instead of two or three. Because of that, the third part remaining has to be, the, third, the second and third part have to be angles. In this particular case, it's called angle, side, angle because the side is included between the two angles. You can also have a situation when the side is not included between the two. Angle, angle, side. By the way, if you're reading it backwards, that's okay. It means the same exact thing. If one triangle is angle, angle, angle side, the other one can be SAA, and that's fine. Or they can both be AAS, or they can both be SSA. Let me give an example. For this particular one, you'll note again that we have some parallel sides. So just as a, in the last problem here, I'm going to draw a Z. Remember, that pretty much identifies where our equal angles are. Remember that parallel lines mean congruent angles, not congruent sides. We don't know that this side is congruent to this side. It's not marked, and parallel does not necessarily mean they're the same length. But we do have those two equal angles. We do also happen to have these vertical angles here in the middle. And because of that, we have three parts in each triangle. You have an angle, you have a side, and you have an angle here with the side connecting one angle to the other. Thus, it's included, and that's what allows us to say ASA. Don't forget that you need to have that arrangement as well in the other triangle, which is what we do have, A. S, A. There's also another way to look at this problem. So let's start over. Remember that because of the parallel lines, we know that this angle is equal to this one. However, you could have drawn your Z shape going this way as well. And because of that, you get equal angle here to here. Because of that, we now have a very different setup here. What you have is a side and then the two angles, and the side is not nestled between the two angles. It's not included. This is SAA. Uh, this one here is AAS. Again, remember, we can't include the parallel side because parallel side does not mean congruent side. No matter, though, we have enough for angle-angle side, so that tells us that they are, in fact, congruent. Here's another example. In this particular one, you'll notice that they again share the same side, but note the arrangement. On this one here, that's angle, side, angle. In fact, let's kind of break this apart here. If you were to take this triangle and just kind of move it aside there, and let's mark this one again, you can kind of see it better. This triangle on the right is angle, side, angle. But if you look at the one on the left, it's not angle, side, angle, because the side in question, it's not between them, but rather over here on the side. So on the left-hand side, you have angle, angle, side. On this one, you have angle, side, angle. Both are used to show that triangles are congruent, but the problem is they're not the same. And because they're not the same, we can't say that they're congruent. What we can say is that they were not congruent. Okay, I want to highlight here two uh, that are in fact not able, that we cannot use to prove that our triangles are congruent. This first one, triple A, there is no angle, angle, angle. Here you can kind of see the angles of this first one here on the left are the same as the angles of the second one here on the right, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the same size. To be congruent, you have to be the same size and shape. So that's not enough for us. 
Over here, side side angle, and yes, I'm aware of what it spells backwards. Uh, ASS. You'll notice that this isn't enough either because uh, here we got two of them that are both SSA. If I put one over the other, you can tell they're congruent at least for part of it. But with these two sides being equal, you can see we got this huge gap. That's not enough to say that they're congruent. So no, there's no SSA, there is no ASS, there's no AAA. In other words, for AAA, that's a car where there are no cars and no butts. No cars, no butts. The other four are fine. These two are not. In fact, I'll tell you right now, there's only one situation where this one can be used, where you can, I guess you can call it the butt theorem, and that's called hypotenuse leg. Hypotenuse leg refers to right triangles only. The hypotenuse is essentially the longest side in a right triangle, and it's only for right triangles that you would refer to this. To find the hypotenuse in any right triangle, just look at the right angle, because it's always pointing at it. The two smaller sides are referred to as legs, so that's a leg, that's a leg. So the idea is this. If you already know that it's a right angle, and you have the hypotenuse in the leg of one triangle congruent to the hypotenuse in the leg of a second triangle, then HL would be the reason for the triangles being congruent. And as you can see, angle, side, side. So this is the only but one that there is. Otherwise, forget it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.